do you ever wake up from a full night's sleep and you're still tired? That happens to me a lot, but not today because I'm excited to make this video because I feel like it's been a while. We're going to talk about itemization again. Uh, I know we talked about it in the position five series already, and it was uh, we covered starting items. We covered, you know, core purchases later. Um, all of that was true, but now we're going to go a bit more in-depth focus on, you know, in this video, the four staff specifically. You know what makes me think i need a four staff this game first item maybe later item you know all of that um yeah that's all i have for an intro let's let's just go into it so as per usual we're over here in the client look at the four staff description ignore all of this to start okay all you care about is this active first this is how we prioritize which item we're gonna get right because supports you know, there's only so many we can buy. We can buy like Glimmer Cape, Forest Staff, Yules, sometimes like a medallion, like some of these. And we're not really buying things for their stats, right? We're not thinking, man, I really need 10 intelligence as a support. You know, I need 2.5 HP regen. It doesn't matter. It does, but not yet, okay? All we care about is the active on the Forest Staff right now. It pushes you 600 units pretty quickly. Um... It was nerfed relatively recently so that you have a shorter range on it, but ultimately that didn't change whether you needed it or not in a given game. Um, if you need a four staff, you need a four staff. It's harder to use now, but you still you still need it if you need it. Um, and we're going to be thinking about that active versus, say, the Glimmer Capes active. We aren't considering the stats because if you need a four staff, even if you would like to have magic resistance, but you need this like ability to move 600 units, then you're buying a four staff. Okay. And if you ever need a glimmer cape, you need the active for the increased magic resistance. It doesn't matter if you would like to have more mana from like a four staff, you have to buy the glimmer cape. Some games, it is very strictly required where like you need the active glimmer or you need the force active. Um, but sometimes it's a bit closer where it's like, okay, I could get a four staff or a glimmer cape and it's like pretty even. That is when we now look to the passive stats. So like 20 attack speed, 15 magic resist, 10 intelligence, 2.5. So if I was like an ogre magi and I was choosing between four staff and glimmer cape and it was like a toss up between both, like it's pretty fair, then I might say, you know what? My health pool or my mana pool is really small. Um, so why don't I get the four staff? because it's about the same price and it'll give me a bit larger of a mana pool that'll make it easier to use. Whereas the Glimmer, no mana pool, just an extra mana cost and that makes it harder to play Ogre Magi because your spells are kind of expensive relative to your mana pool. Now, if you did need the Glimmer active, say the say a Necrophos is on the enemy team and you needed a Glimmer more than you needed a four staff, then you're just gonna have to buy the Glimmer Cape and you're gonna have to, uh, you know, be, play play around your mana pool you're gonna have to be a bit more conservative make sure you have enough mana to do everything um that is when we care about the stats <laughs> that pretty much that's it um for the four staff it is the the 10 intelligence that kind of makes the difference where we're thinking about the mana pool right for a support we never really care about the damage you know we're not i'm not looking to buy this item because it's going to give me 10 more damage it's nice but it's not why i'm buying this item i'm thinking about the mana pool and in terms of health regen, that's nice. Also not a huge deal, right? Because we tend to buy Tranquils as a support or maybe um, like just a, a headdress. 2.5 health regen, nice. Not a huge game changer though for most of us. However, what it does mean is that if we are planning to buy a four staff, then we can buy a ring of regen pretty early because it's cheap. And it's like, okay, let me get this cheap build up item 1.5 hp regen pretty nice in the early game um you know again it's not a game changing stat but if we know we're going to buy the four staff you know might as well start with this item as opposed to like a staff of wizardry um so yeah if you need the active that is our first concern to decide like which item we're going to get and then from there we're thinking about intelligence and then if we're building it we're going to get the hp regen first um so let's think about some uses. I'm about to switch into like what specific heroes make me think four staff. But before we get into that, let me just talk about some basic 
rules for staff, it moves you a it moves you 600 units in a very small amount of time, right? It's this like burst of movement used to be uninterrupted. Now it can be interrupted a little bit um, by certain abilities. Um, but that makes it good against anyone that builds Yule's Scepter to set up a combo. So people like Lena and Leshrac, who would use Yule Scepter on you and then try to land their stun as soon as you land. Um, four Staff can be nice because as you land from the Yule Scepter, you force yourself forward and hopefully you get out of the AoE. You know, some people aren't crisp on their timings. And, you know, if you four Staff really quickly, you can get out of that stun combo. Um, anytime there's a bouncing ability, okay, spoiler alert, we're here on this page. Um, but anytime there's a bouncing ability like um, Lich, his ultimate, that can be helpful so that if you see it bouncing towards you, you four staff away and then it won't hit you. Or it'll hit you, but then it won't bounce to your teammates, similar to a Witch Doctor's cask. Um, enemies that use slows. So people like, who's on this list? Venomancer, Viper. They're not actually fast heroes. They slow you, and you lose a ton of move speed, and now relatively, they are fast compared to you. But if they slow you, and then you force staff away, it still takes them a while to catch up to you because they themselves are not fast. Uh, Queen of Pain. It's kind of funny to say that because she has a blink, but she also falls under this category where she wants to blink in, dagger you, you're now slow, and while you try to run away, she casts her spells and auto attacks you. But if you four staff away, she already blinked in, which means she has to run after you, and she's, she's not that fast. And yeah, she'll have blink again soon, but I mean, you're making her use blink again if she chooses to chase you. But oftentimes, co-ops will want that second blink to be an escape. Um, you know, they blink in, try to delete someone, and then they blink out. You know, if they blink in and then blink again to chase, they're even further than where they wanted to be, um, and hopefully your team can rotate and help you by that point. Um, now, the other side of that is against heroes that are really fast. So like Lycan, when he's ulted, you force staff to build distance, and then he's right on top of you again immediately because he's so fast. That is when force staff loses a lot of value as a kiting tool. Um, combining those two things against any melee core, force staff is usually fairly good because you know the melee core jumps onto you either they like phase boots up to you they run at you they blink in abyssal whatever if you're not dead in that time they initiated on you you force staff yourself and now they have to chase you it's this it's a classic kiting ability um and many melee heroes they'll probably catch up to you because you're a slow support in many cases but you're buying yourself an extra second or two that maybe your team can help or you're just wasting the carry's time um, maybe they BKB to get to you and you four staff and now they're wasting two of their 10 seconds um, just running towards you. Four staff is very good for that. And yeah, those are the general categories. So now let's talk about the specific heroes. Now you've already gotten to see this list while I was talking about that, but let's explain it. Must buy category. This is the most important one for you to remember. If you see one of these five heroes, you probably have to buy four staff first item you definitely have to buy a four staff sometime in this game um in almost every case and it's probably gonna have to be the first item why let's talk through all of them clockwork he uses power cogs to trap you and then he has battery assault going as well so if you're a slow caster battery assault will cancel all your spells you're trying to use you're not going to be able to teleport out um, you'll even have a hard time breaking the cogs because you can attack them to get out of it. But because this is, you know, interrupting you every, what is it, 0.7 seconds, it's getting, it's, it's tough. Um, and odds are if you're a support and you're trapped in by yourself, probably dead. You really need a four staff to be able to get out of cogs. And if you can do that, it kind of kills this hero. His whole thing is to trap people in cogs and kill them, or at least make them like, stuck for like five seconds um while the rest of his team does other stuff or kills that hero if you just four staff out you're alive and this clockwork hero has suddenly committed two spells and like isn't doing anything um three spells even if he ulted in so four staff is really important against clockwork um and 
all of these are not necessarily in particular order, but these five heroes up here, this is kind of an order. So Clockwork, I think, is probably the most important hero to buy a four staff, um, at least from a support perspective, in my opinion. Um, you can save teammates who get um, ulted on by Clockwork and then Cogsed, or you can save yourself. Um, it's just really good. And it's because you just can't, like, you can't do anything. You can't cast spells. You technically can, but if you're casting animations too long, you just can't, like, you can't do anything in there to save yourself um, as an alternative. And any other item you could buy, like, Yule Scepter, you could buy yourself some time, yeah, but you're still going to fall inside Cogs when it drops. Um, the duration is almost done at that point, but, like, still, you're you're in Cogs. Um, what else can you buy? Ghost Scepter, still trapped in Cogs. He's not going to be able to auto-attack you, but you're trapped in there, and you can still be interrupted, so you're not casting spells because his um, battery assault can still hit you. Um, Glimmer Cape might save you to start, but eventually he's going to learn. He's going to buy Dust. <laughs> he's going to cogs you, Dust, and your Glimmer Cape's not going to do anything except reduce the damage you take. Um, four Staff is really just... It's just what you need. Night Stalker. Hunter in the night makes him really fast. He's going to be faster than you. Even in the daytime, he'll have face boots. He'll have some like movement speed items. Could be as fast as you. Plus when he like uses this to slow you down for a bit. Um, and then he can just ult if it's in the daytime. And he's faster than you. And while he's faster than you, he's going to use Crippling Fear. Which is an AoE silence. Okay? AoE silences are very different from... He's not on this list. Silencer, say. Or any other silence, like Orchid, Death Prophet, whatever. They silence you, and you purge it off. However, against Night Stalker, who has an AoE um, silence, you can't purge the silence. You can use yourself, and it'll wait for you to drop, and this will still be going. You can Lotus yourself, and you're still silenced. What that means is none of your spells can save you if he's on top of you using Crippling Fear. You have to depend on items to save yourself. And like we just talked about, Glimmer, he'll, he'll buy dust. He'll still hit you. Um, Ghost Scepter, you can still avoid you or he'll just wait for, um, he'll wait for it to end. Admittedly, it is annoying if he has to just, for a Night Stalker, it's annoying to just have to wait for someone to be um, not ethereal you still can't cast spells if you do that. Um, you know, you can see that trend. Like, you're just not going to be able to cast spells as long as he's on top of you. But if you have a four staff, you can force out of the silence, and you might be able to cast a spell before he gets back on top of you. So he runs at you, you force, you turn around, you throw a stun, and then you keep running. You've now casted a spell. He's wasted. Like, you're wasting his time. Crippling fear is going to end. Um... I just think it's really important. And again, you can save your teammates as well if they are um, the target of Night Stalker and you can run up, force staff them out of his silence. They can cast a spell. They can get out. Or if it's you, you cast a spell or you force staff yourself, cast a spell, you get out. Night Stalker is particularly important because it surrounds him and he will just follow you. Um, compare that to Ricky, who also has an AoE silence in his smoke screen and... He often compare, um, combines this with Diffusal Blade, so he'll slow you, and then he'll drop this on top of you so that you can't get out, you can't cast spells, and then he kills you. Ricky is a little lower on this list than Night Stalker because it is stationary. So technically, you can run out of it. You probably will be slowed, but it, you know, it can be done. Whereas Night Stalker... He's going to be running at you for these seven seconds, and you are not going to get out of it for the entire seven seconds if he decides, like, this is the target I want to kill. Sorry, I just hit my mic. But I'm not restarting. Um, you're dead if Night Stalker's on top of you as a position five, and you're not going to cast spells for seven seconds. Whereas Smokescreen, it lasts six seconds, but odds are if you can run out of it in, like, three or four seconds, Maybe you're alive if you're a tanky hero. Of course, it would be great to have a four staff. That's why he's on this list. Um, but, you know, it's possible. Now, not only Smokescreen, but Tricks of the Trade. So he uses that... Uh, I mean, it used to be his ult. Actually, it used to be his a normal ability as well, I think. But he can only target, like, a certain area, and he can't hit anything out of it unless he cancels his spell. And so if you can force yourself out of that, you'll take less damage. 
Now, it's not a great kiting tool. Ricky is a melee carry, but because he has Blink Strike, and Blink Strike has two charges, and this is also good at um, chasing people, it's not the best kiting tool against Ricky. However, you will force him to use like a couple extra spells, and that can be like okay. Um, but the important part is being able to get out a smoke screen so that you can cast a spell. Nature's Prophet and Slark. These two are also pretty big on this list, but a little lower than these guys. Nature's Prophet, Sprout, very low cooldown spell, and it'll just trap you. As a support, you could probably buy a Quelling Blade and just keep it all game. Um, well, you don't want to keep it all game, but like you can have it for a while. And that's why Nature's Prophet is lower on this list. And in fact, it's probably below Slark. Um, where he sprouts and you Quelling Blade and you can run out that way. But it can be quite annoying because... I don't know. Sometimes the pathing is weird and you'll like cut a tree, but maybe you're still blocked um, depending like where you are on the map. And it's, it's a little finicky. Having a Force Staff is much nicer to get sprouted and then Force Staff out. Or your teammate gets sprouted, you force them out. This is going to be an issue the entire game. Um, and in fact, with the teammate, that is when this is why four staff is a little more important. Because, you know, if you're the one that's sprouted, you could quelling blade and then get out. Um, but if your ally is the one that gets sprouted and you want to help them, four staff, it was nerfed, but it is still a 550 cast range plus any other cast range abilities, or I'm sorry, talents or items you have. Um, and so you don't need to be right next to them. Whereas if you have a Quelling Blade, you got to run all the way up to them, Quelling Blade, and then you guys can get out. Um, but again, could be finicky. Maybe they still can't get out. Um, maybe you cut the wrong tree. There's a lot of reasons why Quelling Blade is, like, it works, but a four staff would be nicer. And Nature's Prophet is the kind of hero, especially if he is playing a core role, where if you get sprouted as a support and he just hits you for that entire duration, you're probably dead. So you really need a four staff to get out as quickly as you can. So we re we've reversed this a bit. Slark, for those of you that aren't aware, it used to be that when you get pounced and you got leashed, which wasn't an official term back then, but when you got pounced and tethered, leashed, whatever, four staff would not break it. But now four staff actually will break it. Um, so what that means is that he pounces you, you four staff, you're out, you're good. Um, your teammate gets forced or your teammate gets pounced, four staff them, they break the leash, you're good. The reason these two are lower on the list is because you can still use abilities against these heroes. Now he sometimes buys an orchid, but that's you know a different issue. These AoE silences and this um, battery assault, essentially you are trapped in an area and you cannot use abilities, and you have to rely on items. Whereas against Slark and Nature's Prophet. You can get trapped in a certain area, but you might still be able to use an ability. And that's why they are a little lower on the list. Still, though, anytime these five heroes are in the game, four staff is at the top of my list of considerations. What is a reason you may not have to buy it first? Perhaps your cores are people that will buy a four staff. So like OD, Drow. Four staff builders as cores are not very popular right now, but those are the two that came to mind. If you see your four support buying it, um, you know, if your team has several or at least one four staff, then it's like, okay, that person will be in charge of like saving whoever clockwork goes on. Um, but the issue is sometimes they're not in range. This is why having multiple four staffs would be good. However, if your team also needs another item, so say there's a clockwork in the game, you need the four staff. Well, let's say there's a Necrophos in the game as well. You need a Glimmer Cape. And it's pretty close, honestly, between those. Like, mm, which do I need first? If it was just me, I would get the Four Staff and then the Glimmer. But if I see my core is buying a Four Staff, then I might say, okay, you know what? We have one Four Staff on the team. Let me get the Glimmer Cape because no one else is going to buy the Glimmer Cape. Even though Four Staff, I think, is higher priority, like, we have one. So that has actually shifted its priority down for me. And no one else will buy the Glimmer. I'll get that. And then I'm going to get a four staff. I'm still going to get both. But I have switched my priorities a bit. Yeah, I think that's all we have to say about that. If you don't remember anything else from this list, please remember these five heroes.
And depending how the game is going, you can um this will be <laughs> this is the last thing I'll say. Depending how the game is going, you can shift the priority down a little bit. So maybe you finish your tranquil boots and you finish a wand and maybe your team really wants a medallion, so you get a medallion and then you get the four staff. But if your if your team's going like doing really badly, maybe you're just like brown boots, magic stick straight into four staff and you don't have time to like pick up those smaller items. It'll depend on the game a little bit. Um and maybe like they just have one clockwork and you have like maybe you're a vengeful spirit. So you already know you can swap people out to save them. And so you decide, okay, I'll buy something else. You know, this isn't please don't like always think I I always have to buy it first. Like you still have to consider the game. Um and think about do I have time to get something else? Do I have abilities that let me get something else? Like um, Snapfire, um, she can actually just cookie people out of Clockworks um, cogs, and she doesn't need to buy a four staff. Eventually, it'll still be nice for her to have four staff in case Cookie is on cooldown, um, but she can delay it for other items if she wants. Okay, let's go to highly encouraged. So these are people where four staff is quite good. But if you needed something else, like I'd be okay with delaying four staff. So Tusk, he has ice shards, which blocks your path. And because it's in like this U shape, it's really annoying to like run out of the U and then back around to get away. And sometimes he may use it at like a ramp and then there's, there's no way to get out. And then they kill you in that time. Or you see a snowball going toward you. Sometimes you can four staff yourself out of the snowball range and it won't hit you. Or you four staff yourself like way under tower, and he didn't want to actually dive that far, but now like he can't stop it. Um, so those two abilities really give four staff a lot of value. Um, tag team because it slows you as well in an AOE around him. That can also be nice to see him commit tag team on top of you, and then you four staff away. Maybe he doesn't have these two abilities to continue chasing, and then you're just wasting the tag team cooldown. Um, getting past Ice Shard, I think, is probably the most important use for the four staff against Tusk. And, you know, again, it's helpful for yourself, helpful for your cores. It takes a little more coordination, but, like, it's good. However, I don't think it's as, like, critical against these five, where there is a path to get out. You know, it's a U, but there is a way out. You can still keep running. Whereas, you know, Clockwork, it's this tiny circle of death. You know, Sprout, Leash, there's no escape. You can only run in the circle. These guys, technically there's a way, but, you know, they're slowing you, they're chasing you, and it's really hard to get out. Um, Tusk, you're still able to use abilities. There's still a path to run out. This is why he's not, like, in this top list here. Skywrath Mage. He's got a slow, so being able to force staff, um, if you're being, like, if he slows you and the melee core comes attack um, comes to attack you, you force staff yourself away. You're buying that distance. But the real thing that we're here for is Mystic Flare, which does damage in a very small area. And oftentimes, this is paired with a stun or a root. So the classic combo is Atos, where he roots you, ults you, and he's used his other abilities, of course. And because you can't move while you're rooted, you're dead. But if you see the, uh, the root hit you, you can four staff. And then, um, well, you should... Possibly wait for him to cast his ult. So get rooted, the ult comes down, then you four staff um, out of Mystic Flare. Um, and if it's not you, you can four staff your allies. Great stuff. Save them from damage. <clears throat> Razor. A big thing about Razor, it's a really fast hero. So using four staff, he's a, he's a fast ranged hero. So four staff is not about kiting him, although it could help you in certain um, cases. Um, but Eye of the Storm hits in an AoE around him, so you want to get out of that. But more importantly, Static Link. He's going to Static Link, probably not you, let's be honest. He's probably going to Static Link a carry on your team. And he's just going to steal all their damage. And this is what Razor does. He makes your carry worse and makes himself stronger. If you can break Static Link, he's not a very useful hero. He's like, okay, but like he wants to steal like 200 damage from your carry. That's like, that is his thing. Um, 
So if you see him use static link and you immediately force staff your carry out of it, your carry can now re-engage and he's lost like 15 damage. It's like, okay, whatever, who cares? I can still fight. Um, and link is a pretty long cooldown. So, you know, if it breaks, Razor just can't really fight. Um, so it's really good to have. Now, again, why is Razor not on this must buy list? Actually, I didn't do it for Skywrath. We'll go back to him in a second then. Razor, um, if he links you, you can still cast spells. You could still stun him and then run out. You could slow him and then run out. You know, there are other options. Skywrath, it's harder, um, you know, because he does have a silence. It can be difficult to do anything where if you get silenced into a root, into the alt, technically you have abilities, but, you know, it's like, it's pretty, <laughs> you can't use them. Um, but you could buy, say, a Glimmer Cape. You could buy a Pipe. There are other options for Skyrath to deal with his ultimate. And even if you don't have those items, your teammates can get under Mystic Flare and take some of the damage for you. You know, there is other forms of counterplay. Whereas against these heroes, it's just like, it's it's really hard. Forest Staff is kind of your only option. Pugna slows you with Decarpify and then sucks you. And if you can't get out in time, you dead. So having a Forest Staff to break Life Drain, really good. It was a lot better when Life Drain was like 22 second cooldown, and then it kind of mashed four staff. So every time he used it, you could force yourself or your teammates out. Now it's only seven seconds. I'm not quite sure why they decided to do that. It made it a lot harder to play around, but it's still helpful. It's still really good to be able to, you know, he uses it, you four staff someone out, and then for at least like about six seconds, he can't really Life Drain someone. And, you know, that's not so bad. Um, the other side of that is if you want to play aggressively, like, um, you could force staff yourself in to stun him. Like say he's draining your carry. You could force staff in, stun him. Um, you know, force staff as a way to get to him quickly. But I mean, if you had a blink that could do that too. So it's more about breaking the life drain if need be. Death Prophet, same deal. She uses Spirit Siphon, which slows you, heals her while you do while you take damage, and she can move while she does it. So it's different from Pugna, who's stationary. So Pugna, you can technically just walk away from, but you will be slowed by Decrepify oftentimes. Um, but she like actively slows you, and she's a fast hero, so she's on top of you. Um, so the four staff is really helpful to break Spirit Siphon, so you're not know just dead to her and you can also buy yourself a bit of time out of exorcism like when you see the ghost chase you you can force staff away i think they'll still chase you for forever if they targeted you but at least maybe you can buy a bit more time um someone mechs you or you know something um but yeah it's helpful against these heroes but not i would say death prophet let's actually move her down we'll put her here um i would say it's not the biggest deal against death prophet um, but it's helpful. So we'll move her to this useful category. And in fact, now that... Uh, I don't know, actually. Now that Pugna's ult is um, such a low cooldown, maybe he also goes to the useful category. But you can get out of, like, Nether Blast because there's a, a, a delay. So you get Decrepified. You see him cast Nether Blast. You could, like, four staff yourself out of that so you don't take the damage from it. Um, you know, I think we'll leave him up here for now. Lich, the big deal with Lich is his chain frost alt so if it just hits one person it's like 250 damage and a slow which isn't like it's not that big a deal the issue is when it bounces between all of you like 10 times and especially if it's only like two of you next to each other and it's like Ch -ch -ch -ch, you're dead um so it becomes really important that if you see him cast it on you or you see it bouncing towards you you force staff yourself or your teammate whoever in a direction where there's nothing to bounce um around and then the alt is just over and when it's over like his other spells are good but like this is the team fight impact when you get it to bounce between a lot of people um so a four staff as a way to remove his ultimate essentially is a really good value it also got a little better because of sinister gaze which could pull you out of position um and then you can use it to help your teammates reposition like if they got pulled up a cliff or pulled into like just too deep in the team fight, you can now have them turn around, four staff them out once it's over. Um, Frost Shield also allowed him to chase, and he is a hero that just relies on slows, so four staff is just good to get out of that. That covers all the highly encouraged heroes. 
now let's move on to useful heroes Earthshaker. Originally, I was thinking about Tusk and Earthshaker, like up here in the must buy category, but eventually I just moved him down. Um, where Earthshaker can block off paths, but it's a lot harder to. Um, like, if you think about it, Tusk, like, fissures you in a U. Like, <laughs> so Clockwork is like a circle. You're trapped in there. Tusk is a U, so you can, like, you know, you can get out. And then Earthshaker is just a line. So, like, there's a whole bunch of area, you know, where you could change your direction to instead. Now, sometimes you would like to just be able to force staff yourself over the fissure. Um, say he blocks you off from your tower and running back is just running to enemy heroes. Um, you are probably dead, but maybe there's a way out. And at least you can still cast spells when the stun is over. Um, that's why I ultimately moved him a little lower down on this list. Um, because fissure is annoying to deal with and it is nice to be able to, you know, force staff yourself over it. But I think it's not the biggest deal in the world. Now, all of these guys kind of fall into the same category where there is a slow ability. I'm sorry, slow is misleading here. There is a delayed ability that you would like to dodge. Um, so Underlord, he roots you and he can root you again, but there's a delay in between it. And now with the cast, um, with the talent, which increases the AOE, it's actually really helpful. So like, let's say he casts it on top of you. You're in the middle. You also get slowed by some other ability. You get rooted. The root ends, and you need to get out of this pit before it roots you a second time. Um, this is where four staff is really helpful. You four staff yourself out before you can be rooted again, and hopefully you're forcing yourself like out of his firestorm, you know, out of his melee attack range. Um, Et a very slow echo stomp that you don't want to get hit by, or the earth splitter you don't want to get hit by. Um, four staff yourself out of it. Snapfire the ult very slow to change. Um, and so if you can suddenly change your direction against the Snapfire, it can make it difficult to continue to land Mortimer Kisses on top of you. Um, and the other way of that is, uh, another way to think of it is to force staff yourself towards her to stun her or something, uh, because she'll often be doing this from quite far away. But usually that use is not as good because she can cast it from so far away that the, uh, you know, the four staff 600 distance is like not enough really in many cases. AA, if you see the ult coming in, I think I accidentally skipped Zeus, but if you see the ult coming in, you can try to force staff out of it. If you get cold feeded, um, you'll be stunned if you stay in that range too long. So force staffing yourself out of it to break the um, the range, and then you can go back into fight. That's really helpful. We did skip Zeus by accident. Um, when Zeus gets Ags and he has Nimbus, it can be annoying. Um, especially if you were slowed by something else or he has the mini stun talent, it can be difficult to get out of Nimbus. Um, so having a four staff to get yourself out, your teammate out, that's really good. What else? Um, Keeper of the Light, same deal. Will-O-Wisp, huge range, really annoying to deal with. Um, Zeus Nimbus, you'll probably get hit by, but oftentimes you can just get out after that. Um, and at most, you might get hit twice and then you get out. But if you start like in the middle of Will O Wisp and like anything else is going on, it can be really difficult to get out, especially because he can blinding light you back into it. His teammates might stun you, whatever. Being able to four staff out of the AoE of Will O Wisp is a really big deal. Now, because blinding light can also reposition you, four staff is again very useful, where if he pushes you out of the fight with blinding light, you might be able to, like, if you really need to get back in quickly, you can four staff yourself in. Or if he cliffs someone um, with blinding light, having four staff to get them down, maybe get yourself down, also really important. Uh, undying. This isn't so much about dodging a spell, kind of like these other heroes, whereas Tombstone, the longer it goes, there is a crazy slow that builds up if you don't deal with it. Um, so you really need to uh, either get in range of Tombstone to kill it off very quickly, or to four staff yourself out of Tombstone range um, so that zombies don't keep building up on you and killing you. Um, maybe he casts it on a, a high ground spot and your team doesn't have a way to check it. Maybe you have to force staff yourself up there to spot it so your team can break it. Um, it's just, it's just good against Tombstone. Invoker, two spells to worry about. Um, EMP, um, because you can see it cast and there's quite a slow, um, there's quite a delay before it actually goes off. Being able to force staff, force staff yourself out of there before that goes off, very good. 
Um, or maybe four staff your carry so they don't lose all their mana. Like maybe you have enough mana to get by. Um, and then the other deal is Ice Wall. It's, it's a, a very strong slow that just, you know, it's this line that you can't pass. Or you can, but it's going to take you like three seconds. Whereas you can just four staff through it. You'll still get slowed because there is a lingering duration. But once that ends, at least you're through it. You didn't take a ton of damage um, just standing in the middle of it. Um, so that's helpful. I will caution you. Oh, um, Sunstrike is another thing you can four staff yourself out of. But it's not so common now because it's really hard to know when he's actually using it. Um, before, it used to be a big... It used to be very common where he would buy Yules and it would be this combo where he Yules you, um, Ice Wall, uh, Chaos Meteor, Sunstrike. It still happens, but um, right now I feel like Quas Wex is a bit more common along with the uh, Soul Vessel. But being able to force staff yourself out of the Sunstrike, very helpful um, if you suspect it's coming down. I will say be careful about Chaos Meteor. Do not force staff yourself in the same direction because that is just going to build up a lot of damage. Chaos Meteor does extra damage if it's actually on top of you. If your models are, um, if it if the Chaos Meteor model overlaps yours, essentially, um, you know, if it rolls past you, you take burn damage, and there's like a lingering duration on that, but you don't take the like impact damage of the spell. Whereas if you <laughs> If the four staff is rolling and you four staff yourself through it, you're going to take so much damage, it can get you killed. Treant Protector, um, similar to Ice Wall, has this Nature's Grass spell that creates this line where it's really hard to get through. And so four staffing yourself out of there, helpful. Um, same with uh, the newly changed Leech Seed where you get slowed. It's a little worse now, actually. The old Leech Seed... Well, this is the old Leech Seed, technically. But the, <laughs> the Leech Seed where it was centered around treant protector you could four staff yourself out of it and then you were good now you still stayed slowed um but at least you can four staff further away so that for a little bit they have to chase you and they're not getting to heal um overgrowth again you can he'll root you but you can four staff yourself you'll still be rooted um so why would that matter because meteor hammer is a very common build for treant protector and you combo it you overgrowth and then you meteor hammer and especially if you can see him channeling Meteor Hammer and you know where it's going to land, you can see my teammate cannot get out of this route in time. Let me four staff them so that Meteor Hammer will not hit. They'll be rooted for another couple seconds anyways, but at least they're not stunned, taking extra damage, and then they can move. Um, so it can be pretty helpful there. Now Venomancer and Viper, we kind of already mentioned earlier, they're just heroes that slow a lot, but they are slow themselves. So if you can four staff yourself away, especially like up a cliff or something, then they're just going to have a hard time chasing you. Storm Spirit. This might surprise some of you, um, but this is actually something I heard Blitz Dota say, um, where I actually don't play a lot of Storm Spirit, so I didn't quite know this. But he was saying how if force if uh, Storm Spirit zips onto you, he wants to use his combo. He wants to um, remnant, pull you, hit you with the uh, overload in between all that. And then he wants you dead in that time. If you if you see him force uh, if you see him zipping to you and you force staff in a weird direction so that he has to zip again to you, um, he does not like that because ball lightning has a it has a cost to start the spell and then it has a cost to continue using the spell. So he wants to just use it once where he pays that initial cost. He pays the zip duration. But if you force staff away, he has to do it again. He has to pay that initial cost again and then pay to zip towards you. And he's using up a lot of his mana pool here. And Storm Spirit is a hero where if he has no mana, he's just useless. And if he uses all his mana pool chasing a support and then the core just walks up to him and he's like, well, I'm out of mana. I blew everything on that support. Um, it is actually a huge issue for Storm Spirit. So um, being able to force staff yourself even just 600... Um, units away is actually a big deal um, if you can dodge a remnant even better um, but yeah it ends up being pretty pretty good against storm spirit it can also let you chase him if that ever happens um, because he can like say zip up a cliff um, if he's running away you can also force staff yourself up the cliff and that can be helpful witch doctor we also mentioned where it's just like the bounces um, you don't want to get 
perfectly chain stunned between like two people. So being able to force style, uh, force staff yourself away so that only you get stunned, um, is very helpful. The reason Witch Doctor's down here instead of Lich is because Lich was a huge ult, right? 60 seconds at level three, um, 100 at level one. Stun, 14 seconds. Um, so if you force staff away and the stun only hits you, he's like, ah, man. I'll just cast again in 14 seconds. You know, it's not it's not such a big deal, even though this one stuns and this one technically doesn't. Um, it can be also helpful to get out of Death Ward range because he channels it and he stands still. It doesn't move around. And so force staffing yourself out of range, pretty helpful. Um, not letting Maledict build up too much if he, like, Maledicts you and then he's hitting you. Um, it's pretty... I would say it's hard to force staff to dodge Maledict. It's technically possible if you see him, like, walking up and then, like, there's a slight time to cast it. I think you could technically force staff yourself out, but I would say that's kind of hard, especially if he stuns you first. Monkey King? Couple uses against Monkey King. Monkey King might actually... I actually always buy it against Monkey King, so let's put him up here. Um, because it has two uses. Three uses, technically. Four uses. See? So many uses. First off, Boundless Strike. Possibly dodge a Boundless Strike. Great. Tree Dance. He charges it, and you can hear him charging it. You don't know where he's casting it, but you can assume that he is attempting to cast it where he thinks you are going to go, and where he thinks that your movement range will get you to. So if you can force staff yourself, you will be beyond what he expected, and then he'll miss his Tree Dance. It can also help you kite Jingu Mastery, so if he's auto-attacking you, you force staff yourself away. Maybe he doesn't want to chase you to finish off the Jingu Mastery stacks to get four. Um, maybe he chooses to hit someone else. And that's how you have to play around Monkey King, is not to let him get to Jingu Mastery. Um, so by forcing, uh, force staffing yourself away, that can be really good. Mischief, no real use. Wukong's Command. If you can force staff yourself out of Wukong's Command, great, because you don't want to fight in there. If you can force staff Monkey King out of Wukong's Command, that's even better, um, because that cancels off the alt um that's actually fantastic value sometimes monkey kings are not careful they chase at the edge of the ring thinking like okay i'm i'm okay here but then you force staff them out and they're like oh oops um now of course monkey kings often do by bkb and then it's like not so good and then you're just going to use it to get yourself out or your teammate out but you know it's a multi-use that's why it's like so good against him and the last thing is tree dance so i maybe i shouldn't have skipped over it <laughs> I was thinking of, in terms of Primal Spring, that's what we talked about. Tree Dance, when he's on top of a tree, you can use Force Staff to break trees and stun him for four seconds. This makes it very dangerous for Monkey King to play, let's say, the side lanes. If you have a Tinker Ward and you see him standing in the trees and you Force Staff yourself over and stun him for four seconds for free and then Chain Stun it with, like, another stun if you have one, um, that can be really scary for Monkey King if people have ways to break trees. Many heroes do not have a way to break tree, but four staff is a way to break a tree. So I always like to buy four staff against monkey kings whenever I see him. And I, I am going to move him up here. It's my video. I say so. Io. Io's a little weird. Why Io? Io's whole thing is to tether to someone. If he's not tethered, he like does nothing as a support, right? He slows a bit with spirits. Whoa. And he has like some items, you know? Great. But overcharge does nothing. Like, oh, I'm Io. I'm a support Io healing a ton and attack speed of like my 100 damage at whatever. Like 100 is even pretty generous. He probably has like 70 to 80. It's just not a big deal. But if he's tethered to a carry using overcharge, that is scary. Where that carry now has 140 attack speed and they're healing, that is a big issue. Tether, 12 second cooldown. So if you see him tether into a fight, and you four staff either the carry or Io and break that tether. Io is useless until he has tether up again. And in that time, hopefully you can kill Io or you can kill the carry. If you see him trying to relocate, escape someone, um, you might be able to, like, you see him start charging it. You might be able to f uh, four staff the carry a little bit out of range, but tether is a huge cast range, so it's quite hard. What's more likely to happen is, again, related to breaking the tether, is that he tethers to someone with relocate, and then you force staff that carry to break the tether right before relocate activates, or at, when it's ending. Either way, that carry gets left behind, and then 
it's isolated for like 13 seconds and then you know if io used it to escape he then pops in by himself and he dies um so it's pretty helpful against io but it's not like you know there are other items you can buy and in fact like soul vessel is just a much easier way to do it where you just soul vessel him and then he's like oh i can't heal he still provides some attack speed but like it's just not as good um that is much safer to do than a four staff because a four staff on io you can't it's really hard to tell which way io is facing because he's just a ball um so sometimes you four staff him and he doesn't break the tether and then it's like oh i just wasted four staff um and sometimes it's just hard to get in range of um io to use or whoever he's tethered to to use four staff whereas soul vessel has a larger range um so yeah death prophet we already talked about we moved her down here so finally these heroes these are heroes where four staff actually loses value so against these heroes you may not want to buy a four staff um or maybe not that you don't want to buy one but that you just have to be really careful how you use it and so it just makes it worth less you may push it lower on your priority kanka x marks the spot it's actually funny so kanka actually goes two ways where because he has x marks the spot if he uses it on you you can't four staff in this time because you're just going to be brought back by X marks the spot. Um, so it just, that loses value in the four staff. Where it can be useful is that the reason you usually get X is because it's going to be a combo where he torrents and ghost ships. It's very similar to like Lena or Leshrac who use Yules and then try to stun you. If you can four staff yourself as soon as you get returned by X marks, um, maybe you can dodge the torrent boat combo. It's pretty tough to do though. Conkas, any good Conka player should have the combo quite um close. I, same with Lena and Lushrak, but I think Conka even more so. Um, because Lena and Lushrak may not buy Yules every game, but Conka always has X marks, and it's a very low cooldown. Well, it used to be more low cooldown, but it's still quite relatively low cooldown. Um, but it's also hard for you because you don't necessarily know when he's going to activate X marks. Um, so like when you get Yules, do you know 2.5 seconds? That is when I'm using it. And in fact, you can even be spam clicking it um, because you can't actually use it while you're in the air so that the second you land, you use it. X marks is difficult. It is very reaction time based because he can, he could use it. He could activate it immediately. He could activate it. Not immediately. If he wants to do the torrent, he has to like cast this and then do it, but he could, delay casting torrent and maybe he's out of sight so you can't tell when he's casting it you have no idea when it's going to happen you only know that it's going to between be between like zero to four seconds and the second it happens you have to use four staff um and you can't like pre-cast it like when you get yules um so it's a lot harder to do against kanka but again could be a way to get out a torrent boat combo or if you like if it's not you and your ally gets torrented you can four staff them and at least dodge the boat for them um so it's an option, but it's it's harder because he can he can X marks you, and if you try to four staff to escape, you just get dragged back. So it's it's painful. Um, Mars, you can't four staff through Arena of Blood, so it just makes it you just lose value. You can't use it to escape. <laughs> you just you just hit the wall and you get bounced back and you take damage. You're like, oh, that was a dumb idea. Um, it doesn't work. That's all I have to say about it. Lycan, we mentioned earlier, he's just a very fast hero. He'll run you down. The four staff doesn't really matter. Um, now, of course, you can... There are still ways to play around it. So, like, you could four staff yourself up a cliff and force him to run all the way around something. Um, that is definitely a potential way to play around with it. Um, but it's just not as good as, like, in an open plane, um, a juggernaut chasing you and you four staff. Like, you buy yourself time. Like, it's Lycan, you, you buy yourself, like, no time. Oh, I will say, if you get surrounded by his creeps, like he has wolves and like the uh, the Necronomicon, okay, four staff is kind of helpful to like get out of that. But like, really, he's fast enough to just surround you again. So, eh. Spirit Breaker, if he charges you, four staffing yourself like six hundred units, he's still targeted to you, so he just hits you afterwards. Um, so it just really doesn't do much against Spirit Breaker as a way to like disengage or kite he can just chase you all the way down similar to like kanka you get x'd and it's like it doesn't matter if you build distance now he's <laughs> just gonna follow you bloodseeker another really fast hero with thirst um but the bigger deal is ruptured if you get ruptured 
if you four staff, you just take a ton of damage. And in fact, Bloodseekers used to build four staff as kind of a meme build um, because you would take so much damage from it. So it just loses a lot of value. If he ruptures you or your teammate, you can't use four staff to save them. Now I will say though, Blood Rite is a AoE spell you can dodge, kind of like um, like EMP, Stomp, all that stuff we talked about before. Whoops. Um, so in that sense, it's kind of helpful. And if he doesn't have thirst, you know, he is just another melee carry where it's like, okay, maybe you can four staff yourself up a cliff. Um, that is when four staff is really good against high movement speed heroes, as I've said a couple times before. But it's just it's hard to play around Rupture. Um, so I'd be I'd be a little hesitant to buy a four staff against Bloodseeker. Rude Mother, she uses spin web and she can just chase you wherever you go. So against all the others, you know, we talked about okay, um, four staff up the cliff or down the cliff and make them have to run all the way around. Rude Mother just drops a web and runs at you. Um, she has all her spiders. She she's faster than you. Four staff doesn't save you. That's that's all there is to it. Faceless Void, two things, same deal. He can chase you up cliffs with time walk, so that doesn't help. And four staffing to build distance, like doesn't help that much because this is a really low cooldown spell to chase you. Um can be kind of helpful against time dilation, that's slow, but again, just I he just follows up on you. And then Chronosphere is a stun that you can't help anyone with. And in fact, you have to be careful because you could four staff them into um I'm sorry, Chronosphere. Um and then you're going to get flamed if you do that to your teammates. Um, I will say, against the enemies, this can be something you can do, where if you see them, like say uh, say Faceless Void engages on someone, uses Chronosphere, and you see their ranged hero, their like, mid Lena, whatever, um, attacking someone from... Th she's outside the Chronosphere, attacking someone in the Chronosphere, you can force staff her into the Chronosphere. Um... So against Faceless Void, there is some counterplay um, available there for you. And if you see him time walk and you can actually force staff yourself really quickly and then he like doesn't cancel Chronosphere in time, he misses it. Also possible, but you know this stuff's hard to do. Um, so I personally think it just loses a bit of value. And you can't, chrono you can't force staff someone out of Chronosphere as well, um, if you didn't know that. So if he Chronospheres your Drow, you can't force staff her to get her out. She's stuck in there. Um, this just makes four staff not so good of a saving ability, in my opinion, against Faces Void. Disruptor. Similar to X marks the spot, if he glimpses you, you just you zip back to where you were. And, and then what do you do? You know? Um, it makes it really hard to use four staff against him. Um, to not just like waste it, where you usually you can just use it to build some distance and then you keep running. But with an ability like Glimpse, which is really long range and just brings you back to where you were, it's tough. Furthermore, you can't get out of kinetic field. You can't force your can't force staff yourself through kinetic field. So this is kind of like Mars, where if you're in kinetic field, you're trapped. Now there is a delay on kinetic field, so technically, if you time it really well, where you get glimpsed and you force staff yourself immediately um, when you arrive. So let me clarify: you get glimpsed. You get brought back to your spot, and then you four staff. Sometimes you can dodge the kinetic field against people who aren't like so good with disruptor or weren't expecting you to four staff, and they were just expecting to like time it with your move speed getting to the wall and that it would be up in time. I'll be honest, I play a decent amount of disruptor and I mess it up all the time. So it can definitely work. Um, it is kind of helpful to get out of four staff, at least until he gets agonims and cancels your items. Um, but at least in the beginning of the game, if he doesn't have kinetic field and he's just like glimpsing you back and then static storming the location and then hoping a teammate to like stun you on top of static storm, if you can force staff that person out of static storm or if it's yourself, you know, whoever, um, that can be really good. But again, if the kinetic field is up, it's tough. Um, so against Disruptor, I, you know, I don't like having to get four staff. Puck. Very mobile hero, so... You can't really use it to escape. She has two ways to chase you and probably has like a blink as well, a Yules. A lot of ways to chase you. A lot of ways to be elusive. So if you try to use it to chase Puck, she's like, okay, I'll just I'll illusory orb this way and then waning rift this way and then blink. Um, very tough on that end. Furthermore, Dream Coil, another leash. 
that if you go out of that range, you get stunned, um, and you take a lot of damage. So if you get ulted by Puck or Staff, you you just can't use it, really. Um, now, if Puck is on your team... So this is mostly if they're on the enemy team. I will say, if Puck is on your team, that's when it's got extra value, because you can actually force Staff. Um, say your Puck initiates... Alts the enemy drow. I don't know why I keep using drow, but you force staff drow to break the leash, and then she's stunned for a duration. I recommend waiting a little bit. So there is like coil has a duration of six seconds. Wait out a little bit to like five seconds, and then force her out to stun her. And then it's kind of like chain stunning her, where she is um, forced to stay in the same location for a bit, and then she gets stunned. Depending on the situation, you may just do it immediately. Like, you really need to kill her really quickly. Um, say she has a BKB or a Satanic, whatever, and it's like, look, we just need to chain stun kill her, like, right now. Then, yeah, Dream Coil, four staff her immediately. <clears throat> Try not to lose my voice. Two more heroes. Grimstroke. So, um, if you can four staff yourself out of the Ink Swell before it stuns, great. That's all I have to say about that. Soulbind, though, loses some value. Where where you get trapped next to your buddy, you try to force staff out, and it doesn't do anything for you. You are stuck together. So against Grimstroke, not so good. Legion Commander, dual, and you force staff, like her target, you just get dragged back. Um, kind of like uh, Axe. Um, and in fact, we can even add Axe on here a bit. Um, <clears throat> where these two heroes, like, they initiate, and if they taunt your teammate, they your teammate gets dragged back in. And this is a little different from, like, say, Vengeful Spirit stuns your teammate, and you force staff them, and you buy some distance. Or maybe uh, Sven's a better example. Sven stuns your teammate, he runs in to hit you. You force staff the Sven or your core, your carry, your teammate, whoever, and you build some distance so they have to chase each other. Or so, so Sven has to chase your carry. Whereas with Legion, Commander, and Axe, they will run to each other, and that makes it not so good. There's just less. I don't know. There's nothing else to say for that. So any hero that's not on here is just neutral, in my opinion. Where it could be good, could be bad. Um... Now, what are some examples? Alchemist. The concoction will follow you, you know? So lose some value there. But you can get out of Acid Spray, and he's a melee hero, so you build some kiting. You know? Great. Pango. He's very mobile. Great. Tons of ways to chase you, even if you have four staff. But maybe you can four staff away from his uh, Rolling Thunder. Dodge a stun. You know, Luna. You can four staff out of her ult. Dodge a Pudge Hook. Dodge Marana. Um, try to get someone out of range before he can ult. Um, get someone out of macro pyre. You know, there are, you know, pros and cons to four staff against many of these heroes. I just don't think they are as um, urgent as like all of these guys. We're going to end this video with a quick tip on using four staff. I know this was an, a video on about like when you buy it and not necessarily how to use it, but I think this one's important. So if you come over to your settings, go to advanced hotkeys, directional move, set it to whatever you prefer. I have alt S. And what that means is that by default, when you right click somewhere, the game is trying to find a path for you. Now, if you're running in a like open area, it's fine. You just run in a straight line there. And if you run over like on the low ground here, you're going to find a path that goes the shortest distance around here. But what if I want to force staff down this cliff instead? Then I have to click up here, face the cliff, and then force staff. Now, if you have space, that's fine. Um, but sometimes it's a little finicky where like say I get Mars speared into the wall like that's a reason I would be here um, and I'm facing this direction because of that and then you know I want to face the wall so I'm like clicking over here oops I accidentally clicked too far and I turned around you know if I if my plan is to like click here and then force staff immediately um, that could be an issue where I accidentally forced myself in the uh, the wrong direction because I I clicked too far and it passed me around this is also quite common in the trees where you know you're trying to you want to go this way um, say you're chasing someone and you want to cut them off and four staff there, but you accidentally click too far and you face yourself uh, this way, you know, like, okay, I did it correctly there. But, you know, you know what I mean, where you face the tree and you go the wrong way.
The way to fix that is to press and hold your hotkey for directional move, so Alt S. And now the game ignores the obstacles in your way and just sends your character there. And, you know, in the open ground, it's fine. Um, when you're trying to go high ground, though, this is where it matters. I won't turn around and find the pathing. It does mean I get stuck here. So, like, in the trees, I would not want to use... I don't want to just casually use directional movement because it'll get me stuck in the trees where it would be easier to just click normally and I won't get stuck. But you alt or you whatever directional hotkey, you press and hold it, click, then four staff. Click, four staff. Alt, four staff. This way. Whoop. Whoop. You know, very easy. Um, get in the habit of doing that. That way you never, you know, face the wrong way in four staff. And that's it for this video. So, um, let me know if you like this or not, if it was helpful. Let me know if you also prefer more clips of examples. So like when I was talking about stuff, I think a lot of it's pretty straightforward, right? Where I explain, you know, if Lycan will just chase you down because he's fast. I don't think you guys really need to see that. I think that's pretty explanatory. But if you still prefer to see it to like really understand it, let me know. I can edit clips in, but it just takes a little longer. And so, you know, if you guys understand it as it is now, then I, I won't do that. And that just saves me time to make other videos instead. But if you do prefer that, then, you know, I'll just edit them in. And it'll take me a little longer, but I want these videos to be helpful. So, you know, if you're not learning anything, then I should take the time to make it um, understandable. So let me know. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Goodbye.